In the late 1980s, Douglas Jacobi, Mark Templer and Douglas Arthur studied out the scriptures and placed a conviction before the brotherhood that in order to imitate the life of Jesus, we as disciples must serve the poor and the needy. That gave birth to hope worldwide. Bob and Pat Gempel were called to spearhead the work of spreading our efforts to reach out to the poor across the globe. Today, 25 years later, hope has a presence in 79 countries across the globe. As I look back at the work, there is no doubt that God's hand has been moving in a powerful way. We were working in a leprosy colony in Lakshpat Nagar and a lady had been badly burned. So one of the sisters was taking care of her. She had put a mosquito net over her bed and was trying to ensure that her wounds would be as clean as possible so that she could stay away from infection. As she was doing that, a lady walked into the colony and she said, who are you guys? I see a lot of people in conferences, but I very rarely see people in slums actually doing the work. That lady happened to be Mrs. Padma Venkatrama, the daughter of the former president of India. She requested that we then come to meet her at the Rashtrapati Bhavan. One thing led to another. Bob and Pat and several leaders met, met with Padma they were convinced about her credibility. She was the first person who I got to see at close quarters and understood that you can be powerful and humble at the same time. And she soon became a mentor. Someone to whom we will always be grateful. We were now working with a group of people, almost 5,000 in number, many of whom felt that it was better for them to die than to live. Sometimes we'd be surrounded by 40, 50, 100 people aggressively, you know, asking for their needs to be met. We were young, so every time we entered the colony, we entered with a prayer on our lips because we could not predict what would happen once we stepped into the complex. In the early days, the patients would fight with us a lot. And one day I stopped to ask them, help me understand, why, why do you fight with us so much? We have come here to help you. And they gave me an answer which changed my life. They said, sir, the reason we fight with you is because we consider you family. If you were a guest, we would treat you like a guest. We, we would be exchanging pleasantries with you, with you, but we wouldn't be open, we wouldn't be vulnerable, we wouldn't talk to you about issues that really matter. That, that insight changed me. It helped me understand why they fought with us. It's such a joy to share about our tuberculosis control program in Bangalore because there was a need when we were doing this medical camp. That's when we set up a lab, uh, set up a different uh, small clinics in slums where we reached out to these people who are bedridden and who have, uh, you know, without food, they were, uh, they were there and without medicine they were there. We were able to give them the medicine. We were able to uh, help them with the, you know, come up. Uh, and stand up in their feet and they can walk. In one part of my heart, I was always just get scared. What if I get affected? Because I have seen all, almost all the cases, if it is uh, TB meningitis or skin TB or spine TB or it's, it's a pulmonary or extra pulmonary, all these diseases, I've, I've seen all these cases and all, most of them were more dangerous as the sputum positive cases. But I, that's when God helped me to trust him more and that's when I understood to rely more on God and to see now, uh, my family has been protected and it's been uh, 20 years I've completed uh, you know, in my service with hope. The reason I am convinced that God was behind our work is because we did not have any architect on our team. 
We did not have structural engineers or contractors. We didn't know anything about construction. And yet, we were able to build, a 700, put 700 houses into place, which are now bustling with activity and are home to thousands of people whose lives have been transformed, changed forever. Their children are now in school and in college. They're able to find jobs on merit. Many of the leprosy patients are working. Their lives have been changed in a dynamic manner. And this is something that I've seen over the years when hope steps into communities for an extended period of time those communities change. But day in and day out, the average hope worker is definitely trying his best to give his best or her best. And that sustained impact of nearly 600 employees, full-time employees across the country, is what is driving change in community after community. From Jammu and Kashmir to Nagapatna and from Gujarat to Guwahati. But today it gives us great joy because Every year, leprosy patients call us up at different times of the year just to talk, maybe to wish or offer a greeting over Easter or Christmas or the New Year or to give us an update about their family. They've gone from a point where they, they've almost cherished death to a point where they feel like, you know, we have reasons for hope, we have reasons for living. And for that, I would give the numerous hope employees and the disciples uh, who've, been, who've been supporting the work on the ground, as well as behind the scenes in many different ways, a whole lot of credit. One of our first initiatives was uh, to help children with education. Because we believe that uh, education is the vaccine that can pull people out, that can immunize people from poverty. We saw it come true in our own lives. Over the last two decades, many people have demonstrated the love of Jesus by serving families here. We planted and watered, but it was God who made it grow. When the children were born, their father left them a few weeks after birth. He was married before, but nobody knew. When my daughter found out she had a nervous breakdown, leaving the children in my care, she would sit by the pavement and yell at passers-by. I work in different people's houses earning 30 rupees a day. When I would come home, she would beat me and the children. I send them to school so that their future can be better than their past. They are safe here. I'm so grateful to the Hope School teachers for all their love and sacrifice. My name is John Paul. I'm studying in 10th standard. My father works as a painter and earns 5,000 rupees for a month. He sends me and my two sisters to school. I come to school because my teachers make learning fun. Last month, to Skype, a teacher from US taught us how to save someone from heart attack. In future, I want to become a scientist and discover medicines in cheaper price and save many lives. The girls come to us and share their problems, their pain, and we counsel them in whatever way we can. We play the role of a mother, teacher, and friend. Many of them dream to come back to school and teach. Hope has truly changed many lives including mine. So we'd started our school, some of them were under a tree. Some were on a concrete slab over a drain. Uh, some may have been near a railway station. All kinds of awkward places, very humble beginnings. And yet now we have uh, a patent pending uh, initiative called Cradle to Career that is designed to help children complete school, pursue college, and then acquire the skills needed to find a job or merit in a hope center and then begin a career. It's, uh, it brings us a lot of joy to see students who came to us as children now in engineering colleges or studying commerce in college. Uh, some have gone on to find jobs with multinational companies. They still live in huts. 
but they may be working for organizations like Goldman Sachs, EMC Square, Bosch, Ashok Leyland. Uh, some of the big names that are out there have students who have been trained by Hope. I am in medical college mein JRM course kar rahi hu Santosh Medical College Gajabad mein. Main apni mummy papa ko bahut thanks bol karna chahti hu and hope village of hope ko bahut 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 zyada dhanyawad dena chahti hu and wo mere ko itne help kar rahe hain jo ki mere chalte aage aur bacche pad sake main itni aage bad jaau jo ki mere chalte sare bacche aage badhe. Our goal is to be able to take this model one day to the government and say listen this is working can we try and replicate it with these different interventions can we try and see how what is working in one or two or five or seven or ten places can now be taken or ported to other places across the country because if india can reach out to its demographic dividend the potential for this country is amazing uh in 1994 the world sector leaders visited india and placed on our hearts the burden of reaching out to india's youth we took their challenge seriously and started training people offering them employable skills today close to 20000 young men and women are coming to our centers across the country we try and keep it as flexible as possible because our goal is to help them to succeed but we don't just train people we try and help them to find a job as well and because of that the cumulative impact of these training centers is is almost immeasurable my name is pukul endi i come from a small village near karaikal i was born without my hands and yet i was able to study and complete my ma in economics i have learned drawing and swimming in my school days i have approached the government for a job a few times but could never get one and i was very discouraged about the situation It was then I heard about the Manpower Vocational Training Center, and I came here. I, f- I I went through a computer course here, and I saw the opportunity to use my drawing skills and make an income. I could sell my drawings to the visitors and guests that came here, and that became my main income. The staff here are very encouraging, and they take care of me very well. I'm very happy here. If MVTC had not been here, I would have been sitting at home feeling discouraged. I studied in a special school because I can't speak. There was a lot of resentment in my heart against God. Till the age of 22, I had no ambition in life and was living in many sins. I saw my brother Chandrashekhar's life changed once he joined Hope. This inspired me to work for Hope. Though I am a mute but i could see and realize my sins and while working with hope i understood that jesus died for my sins and for others since 2006 my life has been full of joy i want to live my life for god i have learned to live in fear of him today i am ready to do anything for jesus i have found my purpose in life amen you know we give out hope as an organization gives out loans to people but we don't charge interest 0% interest it's almost unheard of but what we found is that the poor have been very reliable we give them uh, small loans to start businesses like maybe a tea shop or to buy a cycle to go to the market quicker with the fish that has been caught at the sea shop some may get inputs to start a carpentry business appa min padikira tholil pannitirundare adhuve da nanum pannitirundhen vidiyar kaalla karaiki varrom tsunami vandutu adha maari stage la vande phone call kuda panni pesa mudiyada ella edamum line cut aayiruchu family endha situation la irukanga nengiradhu enak theriyave illa rendu boat rendu boat min padikira boat rendu boat irundhen sir adhu andre kaala kattangalukke valuation or 15 lakh rupaya purumanama irundhathu இப்போ சுனாமிக்கு அப்புறம் அதெல்லாம் இழந்துட்டேன் நான் இழந்ததுக்கு அப்புறம் தான் நம்மள்ட்ட உள்ள எல்லாமே போயிடுச்சு இந்த டைமில் அங்கே லோன் வாங்கிட்டு இருக்கிறதா சொல்லிட்டு இருந்தாங்க அந்த ஃப்ரெண்டு வீட்டில் எல்லோரும் லோன் வாங்கிட்டு இருக்காங்க நீங்களும் அதாவது லோன் வாங்கலாமே அப்
இப்போ இந்த ஆரம்பிக்கும் போது இந்த ஷெட்டு போட்டிருக்கோம் பாருங்க சார் இந்த ஷெட்டே பார்த்தீங்கன்னா நம்ம கோப்பு கோப்பில் லோன் கொடுத்துருந்தேன் எனக்கு பத்தாயிரம் லோன் கொடுத்ததில் தான் இந்த சீட்டை வாங்கினேன் திஸ் இஸ் அலவுடஸ் டு ஹெல்ப் ஈவன் மோ பீப் வாட் வி ஃபைண்ட் என்கரேஜிங் இஸ் யூ நோ த இன்ட்ரெஸ்ட் பர்டன் இஸ் யூஜுவலி வாட் கிராஷஸ் பீப்புள் சம்டைம்ஸ் இட் கிராஷஸ் பீப்புள் டு அ பாயிண்ட் வெத் ஈவன் கமெட் சூசைட் but because they don't have this burden and they are committed to repaying we are able to help others we are able to see them flourish sometimes one one lady may be able to make thatched roofs and employ 10 other people another lady may clean garlic pots and employ five other people so it's these small simple initiatives that hope has been able to support so very often we start with a school then there'll be vocational training then there'll be job creation and so the school serves as a hub but then the other initiatives you know they all start to tie in together to meet important needs in a community and because we start addressing the pressure points communities change one person at a time one city at a time all across the nation among the many things the bible has taught us one of the important things is to value lives and so we have an exciting initiative which is designed to reduce maternal and infant mortality rates and the way we do this is by setting up clinics and then having field workers go into the community and talk to mothers their in-laws their sister-in-laws mother-in-laws and educate the entire family about the need for breastfeeding for health and hygiene for delivering their baby in a hospital uh and for ensuring that the pre and postnatal process is as sanitized as possible as a result of efforts that are as simple as this thousands of lives have been saved the bible encourages to take care of widows and orphans in need the children they come to us sometimes they are placed in a cradle outside the orphanage sometimes they may come through the police or through a hospital they may be found at a railway station a bus stop or on a park kids come over here and you know, they come in very uh, very terrible con- conditions and and to see uh, how they grow how they become happy and uh, you know a lot of children they got they get adopted into wonderful families and to see the result is really awesome like that gives me a lot of joy and that keeps me going since uh, the gujarat earthquake in 2001 uh, what what we have chosen to do is not just help with initial relief to do some amount of relief but then when the cameras and the newspapers and all back off you know the people are still in need so that's when we actually intensify our efforts and though gujarat earthquake took place in 2001 we still have a fully functional english medium school in the city 14 years later and that is that is serving the needs of uh, a community there in a, in a great way but it was not just uh, gujarat we did the same in 2004 after the tsunami which struck parts of tamil nadu in a, in a devastating manner but even today we have about 120 people on the ground in tarangambadi chinnakodi nagapatnam and pudupatnam serving the needs of communities almost 20 different villages around the three or four schools that we have in the in those areas on a regular basis day in and day out thousands of children are getting an education thousands of young men and women are getting trained and communities continue to be transformed after the 2004 uh, tsunami we we helped out in north karnataka when the flood struck uh, we built two vocational training centers there community halls and uh, 90 homes the government made about 14 acres of land available but we were proud to be able to complete those houses hand them back over to the government who in turn handed them over to the beneficiaries and now those places are bustling with activity in 2011 uttarakhand had a problem and we 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 did the same we we went in there provided initial relief and now in uttarakhand we have vocational training centers that are meeting the needs of people who were affected by the landslides In 2014 hope was among the very few organizations to go to Jammu and Kashmir 
identify not only identify a community but work closely with the administration as well as the community and complete the construction of homes and hand them over to the people on whose land we had built those homes the recent floods in chennai they were a great testimony to the church and hope working together to distribute food clothes utensils drinking water and we didn't just focus on relief what was different about the chennai floods was we also focused on rescue there were brothers who went into flooded areas to reach out to people that could not be contacted by their companies and these are multi billion dollar organizations they couldn't reach their people but our brothers just walked through the water not knowing if there's a hole in front of them but stepped out on faith and they traced family after family after family bringing great relief to their employers as well as to relatives who were not in chennai but who were maybe in america or in other parts of the world and they were totally uh, stressed out because they couldn't reach their families one of the most beautiful aspects of our work is to see disciples come and volunteer at a hope site it's truly amazing what hope has done for these people they didn't just provide a bandaid or a temporary um relief for them this is like a permanent community that came from slum to now a middle class community and now what i realized that it's truly amazing how god uses you when you're open to serving a privilege and a joy to have a ho- a disciple on a hope site because they're willing to do any work uh clean a toilet uh help widen or broaden a drain remove junk from difficult places uh paint uh, a school plant saplings play games with the children uh prepare a meal and serve the kids and uh, it is we we feel fortunate because uh, for the last 25 years this is something that's been happening on a regular basis you know when you come here to volunteer they don't say you know come here and you're going to do this this and this they're like okay so so what do you do what are your skills what can you do and then they figure out a way to plug in your abilities into whatever it is that the need is. One fisherman told me one time when we were in his hut, he was a little guy in a Kutiyandi, he lives in this fishing village at Derangambadi. What is hope meant to you in recovering from the tsunami? And he said for us, hope foundation are like shining stars. And here is this grown man with tears in his eyes talking to this white lady that he's never known. But he opened up and was vulnerable with me because I was associated with an organization that had been so pivotal to him being able to put his family back together. That's something to be proud of. That's something to just be so um grateful to be a part of. Jesus bought ha- bought hope and healing to to thousands and now to millions. and it's my prayer that we'll be able to be among those who people whose lives people look at and say you know what i want to find out i want to discover this god that these people are following not because they're great but because they're simple and they're able to consistently do great things so thanks a lot brothers and sisters for the work you've already done please keep us in your prayers and come forward to strengthen our hands as we start to go to various corners of this country